So an open loop op amp circuit is any op amp circuit which does not contain feedback. So for the most part, what we talked about at the end of class last Friday were open loop op amp circuits. Today, we're going to be talking about specific applications that use op, uh, open loop op amp circuits, which effectively means we're going to talk about op amp circuits where having a very, very small linear range is actually a good thing, because that's one of the characterizing functions of an open loop op amp circuit is a incredibly small linear range. The first one that we are going to talk about is the non-inverting comparator. So in a non-inverting comparator, we would have a circuit that looks something like this. Here is our non-inverting input terminal. Here is our inverting input terminal. Here is our output terminal. I'm going to go ahead and label this voltage as V out. And then we have our positive power supply terminal, VCC plus and our negative power supply terminal, VCC minus. So for a non-inverting comparator, our input signal, VN, is applied at our non-inverting input terminal. And we apply what's called VREF or a reference voltage to our inverting input terminal. So let's say that we had a VCC plus of positive 10 volts, a VCC minus of negative 10 volts, VREF or three volts, and Vn was allowed to range from, let's say, negative 10 volts to positive 10 volts. So we allow our input signal to range from VCC minus to VCC plus. What we're going to do is we are going to plot what our output signal should be based on the results of our previous class. Okay. So I'm just going to make a simple graph here. Like so, where the y axis is V out and the x axis is V in. So let's say that we start out with V in being a very negative number. Okay. So if Vn were negative 10 volts, what would Vd be in this case? Our differential voltage. If, I, if we need to go ahead and draw the practical model, we can, but I don't think it's particularly necessary in our analysis here. I think somebody said it a moment ago. I believe it'd be negative seven volts, right? Because negative 10 minus, actually, no, it'd be negative 13 volts. Excuse me, negative 10 minus three is negative 13, right? If we have negative 10 volts applied at Vn or at V plus, and we have positive three volts applied at V minus, V plus minus V minus is negative 10 minus three is negative 13 volts. If our open loop gain is very large. What is our output signal? So let's let's specify some things here because there may be some points of confusion. 
All right, let's say explicitly AVOL is 50,000 volts per volt. RN is 100 kilo ohm and R out is one. Really what we're about to develop here will work for any op amp having a very large open loop gain such that our linear range is small and a very large input resistance such that not a lot of current flows through the op amp itself. The output resistance doesn't particularly matter since we're taking the output voltage to be an open circuit voltage. So we have established that when Vn is negative 10 volts, our differential voltage Vd is negative 13 volts. <clears throat> so my question is, what is our output voltage? Negative 13 times 50,000, right? Is that beyond or is that more negative than VCC minus? Yes. Absolutely. So what is our actual output voltage? VCC minus, negative 10 volts, okay. So let's call this guy right here. ECC minus or negative 10 volts. And up here, we'll have this as a corresponding ECC plus or positive. Okay. So this point right here represents that data set negative 10 for VN. And then our output was VCC minus. Let's jump over several steps. What if our input voltage were zero? What would be VD? Negative three. Okay, so what would be out be? Negative three times 50,000. Is that more negative than VCC minus? Absolutely. So our output voltage is still VCC minus. I would argue that it stands to reason that voltage is going to be constant for all voltages between negative 10 and zero. There's no reason for it to have changed. So I'm going to connect these guys with a straight line. What if Vn were positive two volts? The output is still going to be VCC minus. All right. What if Vn were positive four volts? VCC plus. And for all voltages greater than VCC plus, it should be pretty easy to see that we're gonna saturate at the positive supply voltage. Okay. Now, at Vn is exactly equal to three volts, what's Vn? Zero. Okay. So <clears throat> what I'm going to draw here is intentionally erroneous. So I'm going to put a dashed line actually. Where I've tried to draw dashed line with a slope, okay? As the linear range of this device is smaller and smaller, which means as the open loop voltage goes up, that line becomes more and more steep. With a gain of 50,000, what is our linear range on this amplifier? So what's 10 volts divided by 50,000? So 10 over 50,000 is going to be the same as 1 over 5,000, right? So it's going to be like 2 times 10 to the what? 2 times 10 to the negative 4. All right. So that's 
Yeah, 0.2 millivolts negative. Uh, so our linear range here is from negative 0.2 millivolts to positive 0.2 millivolts. Okay, so that's the only range over which we're actually having linear amplification. Outside of that range, we are either saturated at VCC minus or VCC plus, which effectively means that in truth we see damn near a vertical line at our reference voltage. So our relationship for this guy is as follows. V out is VCC minus for all V in less than V ref, and it is VCC plus for all V in greater than V ref. So what we are doing is we are outputting a high signal that depends on what our positive supply voltage is when Vn is greater than a reference, and we are outputting a low signal, whatever Vcc minus is, whenever our input voltage is less than a reference. So we are comparing our input signal to some reference signal and generating a specified output depending on what we choose to have as our positive and negative supply voltage. So let's put this into practice. I want us to design a simple analog to digital converter. Okay. Very, very simple. All right. We want to design a one bit analog to digital converter such that V out is equal to five volts when Vn is greater than three volts and the out is equal to zero volts when Vn is less than three. So since we are talking about comparators, and we are obviously doing some sort of numerical comparison here. I'm just going to redraw our comparator circuit. Where here is where we're going to apply Vn, and we need to specify all other volts. So, Raijin, what is my reference voltage in this case? What am I comparing my input signal to? Three volts. So V ref is three volts. Elijah, based on my problem statement, what should VCC plus be? Five volts. Dylan, what should be minus B? You have designed an op amp circuit that fulfills a practical application. Not particularly useful, but still 
we have designed a circuit that fulfills a practical real life application. All right. <clears throat> so in a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about how we can generate this three volt signal if we only have a single supply voltage available. But before we do that, I want to introduce inverting comparators. All right. So in an inverting comparator, we're going to have practically the same circuit. So we're going to start with our generic op amp circuit. Here's VCC plus, here's VCC minus. We are now going to apply the input signal to the inverting input terminal. And we are going to apply our reference signal to the non-inverting terminal. I'm just going to move this over a smidge to give myself some room. So let's repeat our previous example where we have VCC plus to be 10 volts, VCC minus to be negative 10 volts, VREF is three volts, and we're gonna allow VN to range from VCC minus to VCC plus. How should our output relationship change? Anybody have any thoughts? You're 100% correct. It's literally like we multiply the, the graph from our previous example by a factor of negative one. Okay. Everything that was above the positive axis is now be below and vice versa. So if this voltage is VREF, this voltage is VCC plus, and this voltage is VCC minus, what we should observe is something that's not even remotely a straight line. Like this. We can obviously trudge through the analysis if we need to, but what was your name again, sir? Preston, Preston you're hundred percent correct. Literally the exact same graph, except we flip, flip it over, we flip it about the horizontal axis. So, from this, we can say that for an inverting comparator, our output relationship is VCC plus for VN less than VREF, and it's VCC minus or VN greater than VREF. Just to reiterate here, this behavior is predicated on the fact that we are utilizing an op amp that has a very large open loop gain in an open loop configuration. On Wednesday's lecture, we are going to play around with these configurations and effectively give the circuit a small amount of memory to overcome one of its uh, limitations. Okay. All right, so The next thing I'd like to do today, and it's really kind of the last thing, this lecture is pretty brief, but that's okay. I'm sure you guys are 
not too broken up about it, is that we're going to talk about how to generate these reference voltages if we only have a single supply voltage available. The answer should be fairly obvious, but we're going to do it using voltage dividers. Okay. So, for example, if I want to generate, let's say that we have a supply rail up here of 10 volts. Here is Vn. And a supply rail down here of negative 10 volts. If I want to generate a three volt reference voltage, how would I go about doing that? Using a voltage divider, right? So when I say using a voltage divider, what I mean explicitly is I'm gonna put some resistor R1 here. Some resistor R2 here. And my goal is that this voltage VREF with respect to ground will give me the voltage that I'm interested in or that, I, that I'm trying to compare against. Let's make things slightly easier here for right now, actually. Let's call this bottom one ground. That'll make our life a little bit easier. And then we'll talk about if we have a dual supply situation. So, if we want VREF to be three volts, what do we need to do? Exactly right. But I mean, how would we go about doing that, Connor? You're 100% correct, but how? Logan, you have any thoughts? I know that you need to make it to Okay, so let's do this in the laziest possible way. Let's say that the total resistance is 10 kilo ohms because I'm trying to get a 10 volt total drop. If this is 7K and this is 3K, I'm set, right? Because VREF simply equal 10 volts times R2 over R1 plus R2, and this needs to be equal to So I was as lazy as possible and made the sum. 10 kilo ohms, which then tells me what my numerator needs to be in order to satisfy the relationship. Okay. Now, I want to talk about something here. I chose kilo ohm size resistors for a very specific reason. Okay. The math tells us that any resistive ratio satisfying a 3 over 10 relationship will work. But the reason that I chose kilo ohm size resistors is because a kilo ohm size resistor is usually somewhere between 10 to a thousand times smaller, if not even smaller, than the internal resistance of the optic. Which means 
the amount of current that can flow into the op amp, which is non zero, is going to be very, very small as compared to the amount of current flowing through my biasing network. Okay. Whenever we are trying to bias an op amp, we want to make sure that the resistors that we use are smaller by an order of magnitude or two at a minimum than the internal resistance of the op amp so that no current gets drawn by the op amp. So we could use a seven ohm resistor in the three ohm resistor here as well. And absolutely we would be okay. The only concern I have with using single valued resistors, and so by that I mean, you know, on the order of ohms instead of kilo ohms, they're perfectly fine to use on the input side, but they're bad to use on the output side. Because if they're on the same scale as the output resistance, so what I mean by this specifically, if we had connected uh, let's see, yeah, a three ohm resistor between here and grip, right? We know that on the output side, what we have is AVOL times VD. Here's R out. And then here's that three ohm resistor. And then there's our output voltage, which will be the drop over the three ohm resistor. So if this resistor is of the same size as R out, so in this case with R out as one, I believe we had set it up in the previous problem statement or whatever. That means that instead of seeing an output voltage of 10 volts, we would see three fourths or seven and a half volts at the output. So you're a hundred percent correct that on the input side, a seven ohm resistor and a three ohm resistor would work. But on the output side, we want our resistors to be a couple of orders of magnitudes larger than the output resistance. So the kilo ohm size of resistance kind of fits the sweet spot of where it's appreciably smaller than the input resistance, but appreciably larger than the output resistance so that our devices operate as close to ideally as possible. No. It wouldn't burn on the op amp, but we wouldn't reliably be putting three volts here because our voltage divider works because effectively all of the current that flows through the 10 volt source flows through this linear series chain. If this were a three mega ohm resistor and this were a seven mega ohm resistor, some portion, some appreciable portion of the current would branch off and flow in, which would change our reference voltage location. So it's not going to burn the op amp out. It's just going to give us an operating point that we weren't expecting. Is that clear? Gradually scratching your head, raising your hand to both. Um, so how does the resistance you put for our reference voltage affect the current flow through the op versus the supply? So that's what I was talking about uh, a moment ago, right? We want these op amps to be appreciably smaller than the internal resistance so that practically no current flows in. Because if any current is branching off here, our voltage divider bias network isn't behaving like a voltage divider because we're giving the current another path to flow. So it isn't really anything that we're trying to limit the current, or there's not any practical reason to try to limit the current that's flowing into the op amp. It's all about making sure that the overwhelming majority of the current flows through the resistor network. Will it affect VCC or VCC plus? No, VCC plus is a voltage that's being supplied by an external source, and same as VCC minus. So it's not it's never going to change the value of VCC plus or VCC minus or anything like that. Um, it'll 
potentially cause a small change in the currents that are flowing from those power supply voltages, but not enough to cause any appreciable changes. Right. All right, so let's make this harder and say, This is some VCC minus now that isn't zero, right? What do I call this? And for simplicity's sake, let's call this guy up here VCC plus. And let's talk about how to generate a specific reference voltage with respect to ground. What we're going to do is we're going to use evidence theory. Okay. And so, what I mean by that is we have a terminal right here, and we have a terminal, an implied terminal right here to where we're getting the VREF that we're looking for. So disconnecting the op amp entirely, because we're going to use resistors that effectively mean no current's going to branch off and flow through the op amp, or very little current's going to branch off and flow through the op amp. What our circuit looks like, the left-hand side, let me draw some lines here. We're disconnecting the left-hand side, and we're trying to generate a feminine voltage of a particular reference value. So what we have is here's our resistor R1 here's VCC plus which is measured with respect to ground Here's resistor R2. Here's VCC minus measured with respect to ground. Here is our open circuit voltage. <clears throat> no. VCC minus in this case is not ground. VCC plus isn't necessarily 10 volts. We're just looking for two different volts. Okay. So we are getting the Thevenin equivalent of the biasing network on the left hand side because we want to get a specific reference voltage, right? So we're going to figure out what the relationship is here for this VOC in terms of VCC plus, VCC minus R1 and R2. And then we have to choose those component values to give us a specific V reference. Okay. So the reason why we're going through this is because op amps can take two supply voltages, right? Well, what if we have an application to where we can't say that VCC minus is arbitrarily zero volts, but we still need to supply a specific reference voltage with respect to ground. We're working through the math involved with that. So how do I determine my open circuit voltage here? It's not supposed to be a trick question. All right, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to use superposition. Okay. So let's say that BCC plus is on and BCC minus is off. So if VCC plus is on and VCC is off, meaning that this is just short circuited, then we see a total voltage drop of VCC plus over R1 in series with R2, and we only want the drop over R2. So that's going to look like VCC plus times R2 over R1 plus R2 with VCC plus turned off and VCC minus left on, we again have another simple voltage divider circuit where VOC is just a voltage drop over R1 alone. So that's going to look like plus VCC minus over R1 over R1 plus R2. This combination gives us our reference voltage, right? So Let's say, for example, VCC plus is 10 volts and VCC minus is negative 10 volts. Our reference voltage. It's the same thing as our open circuit voltage, because these are both measured with respect to ground, would be 10 volts times R1 minus 10 volts, excuse me, that should be R2, R1 over R1 R2. We want this to come out to be three. Which means three volts times R1 plus R2 has to be equal to 10 volts times R2 minus R1, and we just need to choose resistor values that satisfy these constraints. Okay. So let's arbitrarily choose a 10 kilo ohm resistor for R1 just for the sake of argument, right? We have to pick one to find out what the other is because they're a coupled set of equations. So this would be three volts times 10 kilo ohms plus R2 is equal to 10 volts times R2 minus 10 kilo ohms. So it's going to be 30 kilo ohm volts plus 3 volts times R2 is equal to 10 volts times R2 minus 100 kilo ohm volt. So that would be 130 kilo ohm volt is equal to 
seven volts times R2, and therefore R2 is equal to 130 over seven kilo ohms. So under that constraint, we would get our three volt reference, right? Just have to play around with the numbers in order to get the reference value that we're looking for. So let's play around with LT spice. I can find Hopefully I haven't been muted this whole time. Apologies. So there's my universal op amp. And over here to the right, I am going to choose to drop some voltage sources. I'm just setting things up exactly how I did the other day. And let's make this a 10 volt source and this a negative 10 volt source. We'll make this network BCC plus. Now we'll label BCC minus. Like so. I'm going to label my output node V out. It's not exactly what I wanted. There we go. And I'm going to give myself an input voltage source as well. Here's the end. And if I want this to range from VCC plus to VCC minus, I can't simply put in an amplitude of VCC plus or anything like that here. I'm going to have to actually play around with things. So uh, I'm just going to call it a 10 volt amplitude, which means it's going to have a peak value of positive 10 and a minimum peak value of negative 10, which is giving me the exact range that I'm looking for here. Arbitrarily, a frequency of one hertz. And let's see, label this as VN. And what I'm about to do is just move things over a smidge. give myself some room. Like so.
and let's put BCC plus up here and BCC minus down here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we chose R1 to be a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And then R2 was 130 over seven, which I can't do off the top of my head. What's 130 over seven? So one point. 18.57. I'm going to do a transient analysis. Simulate, edit simulation can't. The transient analysis for three seconds so that I get three full cycles of the input sine wave. And I'm going to press run. So if I click here, there's my input signal. Now let's look at my output. Okay. So it looks like it transitions from low to high somewhere in the ballpark of three volts based on that resistor combination. Right. Now, if we simply mouse over this, we can see that the DC operating point voltage is 2.9996109 volts. So that's another indication that we chose our resistors pretty well. Now, this graph does not look like the graph that we generate. Okay. For the behavior of a comparator with a reference voltage of three volts. And the reason why this graph doesn't look the same is because this is plotting V in as a function of time and V out as a function of time, not V out versus V in. So let's talk about how to get that graph because I'm going to ask you to do that specifically on your homework. Connor. Which points of reference did you choose? My input signal and my output signal. Sorry, you can't see it because the Zoom meeting thing is in the way. So I'm just looking at VVN, or the voltage applied at my input terminal, and VV out, which is the voltage taken at my output terminal. That's it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mouse over my bottom axis until the ruler sign shows up. And then I'm going to right click. And we can see very explicitly that it says horizontal axis, the quantity plotted is time. Well, if we want to change that, we literally just tell it what else to plot. So I am going to plot V, open parentheses, Vn. So this is telling me that my horizontal axis is now Vn. And I get this graph. This diagonal line here is Vn versus Vn, which should just have a slope of one. It's not telling me anything whatsoever. So I'm going to delete it. And what I get is now V out as a function of Vn. And I can see very clearly that my reference voltage is something real close to three volts. So on your next homework assignment, where I'm going to give you both an inverting and non-inverting comparator, and I'm going to give you a reference voltage and then a value for the input voltage range. This is what I am expecting you to do. Okay? Use a sinusoid source to generate your input voltages over a range. Right? In this case, because I'm using a sign with a 10 volt amplitude, that means it's going from negative 10 volts to positive 10 volts up and down over and over and over again. All right. So if I wanted, let's say, it to go from zero volts to five volts, what would I do? Pardon? Exactly right. So from zero volts to five volts, I would need to give myself a DC offset two and a half and an amplitude of two and a half. Okay. 
And now I go from zero to five. But obviously, I can still see that my reference voltage is three. To plot V in versus V out, what I did was in my graph, I moused over the horizontal axis, I right clicked, and I changed the quantity plotted from time to my input voltage, which is V open parentheses V in close parentheses. Any questions regarding the plotting and stuff that we did here? So just to recap what we've talked about today, um, we've talked about two different open loop op amp circuits, both the non-inverting and inverting pairs, which are used to compare the strength of a voltage signal to some reference voltage. And then output either VCC plus or VCC minus, depending on which configuration we have. We've talked about using resistor networks to generate reference voltages from fixed supply voltages, because I would be hard pressed to find a three volt battery anywhere that we could just throw into our circuit or anything like that. We've talked about that in conditions where we have a single supply, so just a VCC plus, or a dual supply where we have a VCC plus and a VCC minus. All right, so I believe that is enough out of me for today. What we are going to do on Wednesday is we're going to start with a simple comparator circuit, and then I'm going to show you why it does a bad job on occasion, and it has something to do with noise, and then we're going to talk about how to fix that noise dependence, and then get into other positive feedback op-amp circuitry. All right, thank you guys.